Artificial intelligence is transforming everything. It's everywhere now. It's helping us write emails, summarize meetings, and even create art. It's becoming more and more embedded into our day-to-day -day lives. Billions of people today are benefiting from AI. But AI isn't just software floating in the cloud. It's also hardware built on a global supply chain that depends on just a handful of key players. But relying on just a few companies, especially in the world we live in today with fragile geopolitics and huge financial pressures, comes with some quite serious risks. So I want to break it all down. So there are six important stages in the AI supply chain, all leading to the apps that you and I would use every single day. These AI models behind these apps are engineered and trained with massive amounts of computing power. I mean, ChatGPT alone was trained on a data set of about 4.5 billion web pages, which is quite often known as the common crawl. Now, to process that much data, you need high performance devices called graphics processing units or GPUs, and you need quite a lot of them. Tech giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google pack them all into massive data centers. They are very expensive to run and also require a huge amount of energy to use. So much so that Microsoft is planning to reopen old nuclear power plants to meet the demands, just like this one. But if we go back even further, where do those GPUs come from? The recent advances in generative AI would be completely unthinkable without these GPUs, designed by a single company, and that is NVIDIA. Thanks to the AI boom, NVIDIA is now the fourth largest company in the world. But GPUs cannot be made without semiconductors. So those are the tiny little chips that power everything, from your vacuum cleaners to your cars to your latest iPhones. They are completely essential for AI. And about 90% of the world's most advanced microchips are made by one company, which is TSMC in Taiwan. Then there's ASML. That's a Dutch company that makes the lithography machines needed to print the microchips onto a thin slice of semiconductor material called a silicon wafer. They currently are the only company in the world capable of producing the most advanced EUV lithography machines, which require thousands of high-end components sourced from hundreds of suppliers from around the world. I mean, to put it into perspective a little bit, these machines currently cost around 380 million US dollars each. But it all starts with raw material extraction. Advanced AI technology requires rare earth metals and silicon. And these materials are generally mined in countries like China, uh, Congo, and Australia. Now, Ukraine also plays a crucial role because Ukraine produces ultra-high purity semiconductor-grade neon gas, which is crucial for semiconductor manufacturing. But the ongoing war with Russia has put a lot of pressure on this stage of the supply chain, and it's really showing how important it is, especially to major powers like the US who really want to be the front runners for AI. So here's the problem. As we've seen, almost every advanced AI system today depends on just a few key players. That is TSMC, the company in Taiwan that makes the advanced microchips, and ASML in the Netherlands, builds the only machines capable of printing them. This means that if something were to happen to TSMC, whether that be a natural disaster in Taiwan, a geopolitical crisis maybe, or just a supply chain disruption, the entire AI industry would slow down. So I recently spoke to Dr. Nils Peters to better understand the challenges we are facing. There's only a handful of companies in the world that are specialized enough to produce these technologies. And what we see today in microchip um, technology is that this is the result of 50 years of Moore's Law. Um, Moore's Law was a prediction made in the 1970s that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years. And that's held up for 50 years. So what we see now is that factories and scientists in them operate at the edge of known physics to make these chips. And that makes it very, very difficult to produce them. You can't just move a factory somewhere else. You can build a new one, and that's gonna cost billions, take years, and by the time you're done, it's not even clear whether it's still gonna be cutting edge. So when there's any disruption, like a COVID pandemic to this production process, it's very hard to replace it and just do it somewhere else. So what strikes us as very virtual with generative AI is actually very much material. And when we look at the material, we see all these fragilities in the supply chain. Okay, so as AI integrates itself into our daily lives, here's where we're at. Firstly, 
The AI industry relies on a global supply chain with just a few companies holding a lot of the power. If any part of that chain breaks, the entire AI industry could be in trouble. And the cost of AI, both in terms of money and energy, is only increasing. So AI isn't just software, it's hardware, it's mining, it's geopolitics. And as new technologies emerge and global competition for AI dominance is accelerating, the whole future of AI remains uncertain. And that is something definitely worth thinking about.